young Pat lives with her mother, who is African American. All her life she thought she was mixed blood until she learned the truth about who her real parents were. In the town of Sparks, Nevada, a young girl named Pat starts her usual day. Her mother, Jimmy Lee, makes a fuss about her hair before Pat leaves for high school. At lunch, a new student tries to sit with Pat, but is quickly taken away by another student who doesn't want her at the black table. Pat faces challenges from both sides. She's threatened by an African-American student for being light-skinned, and later, while walking home with her boyfriend, Louis, they are stopped by racist police officers who mistake her for a white girl being harassed by a colored boy. Pat has to clarify that she is mixed race with a black mother. When Pat gets home late that night, she finds her mother drunk and in a foul mood. Jimmy Lee criticizes Lewis's future and laments her own missed opportunities. Claiming she could have been as famous as Lena Horne if she hadn't ended up taking care of Pat, Jimmy Lee is not interested in Pat's concerns about a man who has been following her. This confrontation seems to be a recurring issue between them. After her mother passes out, Pat sneaks into her room and discovers a birth certificate for a fauna hodl, listing a white mother named Tamar and an unidentified black father. The next morning, Pat confronts Jimmy Lee with the birth certificate. Jimmy Lee confesses the truth. Pat's real name is Fauna Hodel. While working as a restroom attendant, Jimmy Lee was approached by Tamar, who handed her newborn Fauna and a $50 tip to take care of her. Jimmy Lee often reminds Pat that the Hodel family is wealthy and that Pat will inherit this wealth, which is why she believes Pat should avoid Lewis during her next shift at the hospital. Pat manages to find a document in the records room with Tamar's father, George Hill Hodel's contact details. Pat calls him in Los Angeles, and George doesn't seem surprised by the call. He warns her against contacting Tamar, claiming she's unwell and would be disturbed by the call, and invites Pat to visit him, asking her to inform him upon her arrival in Los Angeles. Pat is still processing this call when she's falsely informed by a hospital nun that Jimmy Lee has passed away. Hurrying home, Pat discovers Jimmy Lee is very much alive, having staged the scenario to teach Pat a harsh lesson about loss. As Pat begins to pack, Jimmy Lee attempts to defend her cruel trick. Shortly after, both Lewis and the person who had been following Pat discreetly accompany her to the bus station for her trip to Los Angeles. The journey includes a stop for gas and snacks, during which an elegant gentleman engages Pat in conversation. She shares with him that she's on her way to meet her grandfather for the first time, hoping to understand her origins and identity. The man responds positively, affirming her quest for self-knowledge. Jay Singletary, a veteran of the Korean War and a once respected journalist, now works as a freelance photographer for The Examiner capturing scandalous images of well-known people in Los Angeles. An editor tips him off about the brutal murder of Janice Brewster, and while following the story, he is reminded by a young journalist that his career was ruined because he pursued stories that were too dangerous. The gruesome tale of Janice appears to be just such a story. While photographing Janice's dismembered remains in the morgue, Jay's laughter from his hiding spot inside a morgue drawer attracts the attention of a detective named Billis and his police entourage, leading to Jay's beating and arrest. The following day, Jay's friend from the war, now in lap officer named Oels, rescues him from the police car where he's been left unconscious. Oels convinces the police to drop the charges and suggest Jay could file a complaint for the mistreatment. Though Jay fears retaliation and decides against it, OLS cautions Jay about getting involved with Billis, hinting at dangerous connections. Back at his apartment, Jay contemplates using heroin but opts to attempt suicide by hanging himself with a belt. His plan is interrupted by a phone call from Jimmy Lee, who has information on George Hill Huddle, a subject Jay once investigated. She insists he was on the right track and encourages him to continue the investigation. Meanwhile, Fauna, having arrived in the city, tries to stay composed as she leaves another message for her grandfather. At the same time, a lavish party is happening at Hodel's grand residence. Fauna also contacts Corinna Hodel, her step-grandmother who, despite being in distress, warns Fauna that Hodel is extremely dangerous and advises her to steer clear of him. The story then reveals that Hodel is the same sophisticated man who spoke with Fauna during her bus stop break, hinting at a deeper connection between their paths. Fauna arrives by taxi at the house of her great-aunt known as Big Mama, a relative of Jimmy Lee's. Her cousin Tina, though reluctant, accompanies her on a bus ride to the Hodel Mansion during the journey. Fauna witnesses the mistreatment of a black woman by the bus driver and sees a black man who tries to help by paying her fare. 
being attacked by several lapped officers in the presence of many onlookers. However, their trip proves unproductive when they find no one at the Hoddle residence to answer the door. In the meantime, Jay shares the intrigue of his recent phone call with Peter, the editor who enjoys his drinks, who we encountered in the previous part of the story. Peter updates Jay, and thus the audience, that Hodel was acquitted a decade ago, and that Tamar, the key witness against Hodel, took back her accusations. Jay suggests that Tamar's retraction might not be genuine, considering she was sent to a convent, preventing any direct confirmation of her changed statement from him. Later, Tina takes Fauna to a social gathering where Fauna's mixed heritage becomes a topic of surprised conversations again. On their tipsy walk home, Fauna notices she is being followed and attempts to lose her observer. The next day, she seeks more details about her origins from Big Mama, carefully not to dishonor Jimmy Lee or the efforts she put into raising her. Fauna expresses her desire to feel less different by knowing her biological parents. It seems her pursuit might be drawing closer to an answer as her observer has tracked her to Big Mama's home. Jay's investigation into Hodel is put on hold when Peter calls him. Upset about missing details in his story about Janice Brewster, a man named Brody Stiles has admitted to the crime, leading Jay to be tasked with exploring a new direction for the story, focusing on sensationalized themes. Fauna, after hitting a roadblock with her grandfather, attempts to connect with Corinna, Tamar's former stepmother. Corinna initially tries to dissuade Fauna, claiming Tamar has passed away and implying she hasn't been in contact. Despite this, Fauna persists and Corinna invites her over. During the visit, Corinna speaks highly of Art and her own family's legacy without disparaging Tamar, despite hinting at a tragic impact Tamar had on the family. While Corinna is away, Fauna discovers a photo of a black man among the artworks, which catches her interest. Corinna reprimands her for looking around but quickly shifts focus, hinting at revealing something significant about Fauna's heritage. Jay learns from a trustworthy informant in county jail that Stiles frequently fabricates confessions for the lap D, casting doubt on his admission of guilt in the Brewster case. Owells, skeptical of the confession's authenticity, mentions a potential witness named Wendy, but advises Jay to let the case go now that there's a confession. A sudden noise triggers a moment of reflection on their past military experiences for both men. The conversation then shifts to Hodel, with Jay theorizing about an illegal operation Hodel might have been involved in, which Tamar was aware of. Owell suggests Jay should speak with Hodel's ex-wife for more information. Jay sees Corinna and Fauna leaving together and follows them to the Huntington Museum of Art, curious but unsure of Fauna's identity. After deciding not to intervene, he notices his own follower heading inside. During a refined lunch at the museum, Corinna tries to teach Fauna about proper etiquette while also defending Hodel's absence, claiming he's too occupied to meet. She then shifts the conversation to art, particularly Hodel's contributions to surrealism, and offers to show Fauna some of his works displayed there. Fauna, exploring on her own, hears a voice saying her name and encounters Hodel speaking about satire. Following advice from O.L. Shea, meets Wendy, a sex worker, who insists that Janice would not have been involved with someone of a different race due to her prejudices. Wendy mentions Janice had been happy about meeting a new, seemingly respectable person. Jay's next memory is of waking up next to Wendy's manager. Mary, who is upset over a child taken from her at birth by nuns, meant to hide the shame of unwed mothers. This conversation triggers Jay's memory of Fauna, prompting him to leave in haste. Jay heads back to the museum, eager to find Fauna who is cautiously trailing Hodel, captivated by his words about truth and desire. As she finally decides to reveal herself, she's startled to see Hodel directly in front of her, recognizing him as the man from the bus stop, where she quickly withdraws. Jay rushes back into the museum, darting through the galleries in search of Fauna while Corinna is already leading her away. When Jay exits, he finds Corinna's car missing and, in a bout of anger, confronts a security guard, resulting in the guard losing a tooth. Corinna then drops Fauna off at a bus stop, explaining that driving her back to Big Mama's would not be safe yet also implying that staying there isn't suitable for Fauna either. Fauna insists it's where she belongs, highlighting her mixed heritage. Corinna dismissively rejects this, claiming Tamar was deceitful, and that Fauna's real father was a notable French ballet dancer, not a man of color as Fauna believed. Outraged by Corinna's denial and racist remarks, Fauna accuses her of lying and defends the legality of her birth certificate. She leaves Corinna behind, boards a bus, and doesn't notice that the person following her also gets on the bus and sits down. In 1945, a young Tamar Hodel watches from the shadows as a group of white men relax by the fire, 
soon joined by several women in masks and laundry, with Hodel at the center of it all. He calls out to Tamar, playfully asking if she's dreaming as he engages in a flirtatious game of peekaboo with her. The scene escalates as Hodel begins to undress a woman on his lap, with Edgar Allan Poe's A Dream Within a Dream recited in the background. This leads into a sequence of risque activities, winkligating in a moment when one of Hoddle's guests slices through a woman's bra straps, and Hodel himself places a bag over her head, before returning to the fire wearing a large minotaur mask. As Poe's verse concludes, hinting at the illusory nature of the spectacle, and suggesting Tamar might be led to doubt her own perceptions. Fast forward to 1965, Fauna and Jay are each facing their own struggles. Fauna is nearly abducted by the person following her, but narrowly escapes with the help of a dismissive police officer, who derogatorily comments on her living situation. Jay, meanwhile, is haunted by memories of war, which morph into the real terror of being raided by police led by Billis after Corinna reports him. In a tense moment, Billis threatens Jay with violence, only for OLS to intervene by bringing in a superior officer. Despite OLS's rescue, he warns Jay to abandon his investigation into Hodel, emphasizing the danger and isolation Jay faces should he continue. Corinna's words have a profound impact on Fauna, who decides to wear her hair down after being told by Corinna that she's white. Nero, a bold teenager Fauna met at a gathering, reaches out to invite her on a date. As they converse, the scene shifts to show a tape recorder beginning to capture their conversation from an undisclosed location. Unmoved by Nero's advances, Fauna ends the call, and Nero leaves the phone booth, unaware of a car that starts to tail him. After being released, Jay heads to Peter's preferred pub, determined to argue that his recent arrest only validates his theory about a lap-protected abortion clinic. Their heated debate is interrupted when a patron's fall triggers Jay's PTSD making him seek refuge under the table. Peter, familiar with Jay's panic attacks, watches as another patron mockingly calls out to Jay, leading to a confrontation that gets Jay thrown out of the bar. Before leaving, Jay emphasizes to Peter that the ex-wife is crucial to the investigation. Fauna, suspecting Tamar, is hidden away in Corinna's residence, waits for Corinna to leave before sneaking in. While Tamar is not found, Fauna discovers a recent envelope addressed to Tamar and sees more of Hodel's art, including a horn sculpture reminiscent of the one Tamar describes seeing Hodel wear. The person following Fauna whispers her name, but stops searching when Corinna returns home. Fauna escapes by climbing down a drainpipe, and Jay, who has been observing the house, notices her. He offers her a lift as she walks home. Initially wary, Fauna starts to flee when Jay mentions Tamar, but when her pursuer tries to coax her into his car, she chooses to trust Jay instead. Jay takes her to a diner, shares his story and his link to Tamar, and gives her $5 for her time. But Fauna only shares her first name and repeats Corinna's claim that Tamar is untrustworthy. After excusing herself, Fauna leaves without Jay noticing. Distressed, Jay tries to rejoin the military, but is told he's too old. Leaving, he spots a magazine featuring the Black Dahlia murder. Meanwhile, Fauna's follower presents his artwork to Hodel, eager to assist with Hodel's secretive endeavors. Hodel rejects his offer, citing his own influences and warning him to focus on Fauna instead. It's back at Big Mama's, the atmosphere is tense due to Nero's death. Shy, a kinder acquaintance from the party, agrees to help Fauna escape her current situation. At his place, Fauna calls Jimmy Lee, announcing her move but their conversation ends in disagreement over Fauna's return and Jimmy Lee's refusal to disclose what she knows about the Hodels. In his car, Jay notices parallels between the murders of Elizabeth Short and Janice Brewster. At the Hodel mansion, Hodel investigates strange growling noises and finds something with hooves under the door. Hodel continues to operate his unauthorized abortion clinic, confidently drinking brandy in front of his next patient. During a chess game with Fauna's follower, Sepp, Hodel is told he'll have time to plan his next steps. Sepp, however, declares his intention to disrupt the game and takes the king piece. Jay receives a vague and possibly inebriated call from Corinna, promising to reveal something significant. He meets for breakfast with OLS, who has been demoted for aiding Jay previously, and ALS's much older colleague. They discuss the Black Dahlia case, with OLS's partner mentioning the absence of similar crimes and suggesting the killer must have despised Elizabeth Short, Jay disagrees, suggesting the mutilation signifies something other than hate. He revisits his Crime Chasers magazine, noticing a distinctive keyhole-shaped mutilation on a victim. Shai shows Fauna where Nero was discovered, performing a ritual in his memory. 
which disturbs a homeless man below. The man remembers seeing the police and another individual with a distinctive car before the discovery of Nero's body. This reminds Shia of Fauna's earlier concerns about being followed by someone driving a similar car. Back at Big Mama's, Fauna learns she narrowly missed this person, who left her an invitation from Corinna to an event called a happening. Peter forwards an identical invitation he received at his newspaper's art desk to Jay. Set to the tune of Play With Fire, Fauna navigates a complex art event, dodging inquiries from Jane, a curious attendee, about her connection to the Hodel family. She then sees Jay among the attendees and evades him by entering another art piece where Corinna is part of the exhibit. Guests pass around scissors, cutting pieces from Corinna's dress. When it's Fauna's turn, she drops the scissors, ending the performance. Corinna then pulls Fauna aside for a critique on the fine line between avant-garde and tacky, impressed by Fauna's insightful interpretation of the act as a commentary on complicity and victimhood. However, Corinna remains evasive about Tamar, leaving before Fauna discovers an address book with a clue to Tamar's whereabouts. Fauna's triumph is abruptly interrupted by Sep, who ambushes her, intending to harm her in a prepared space in the basement. He menacingly threatens her, but before he can act, Jay intervenes, fatally wounding Sep with a makeshift weapon. After the struggle, Jay is haunted by visions of a creature, hinted at but unseen except for a menacing red glow in its roar. Despite Jay's initial desire to flee the scene, they're forced to move Sep's body after being accidentally discovered. They manage to transport the body out of the venue without raising suspicion. Thanks to the event's eccentric nature, they dispose of the body near where Nero was found, taking with them the weapon, Sep's wallet, and a significant chess piece from his possession, leaving behind a complex web of guilt, fear, and unresolved mysteries. After bringing Fauna to his apartment, an intoxicated Jay experiences a vivid nightmare where he's interrogated by Billis and Sep. Fauna wakes him with cold water to the face. She expresses her gratitude for saving her life and shares that Sep had been stalking her for years. She proposes that if Jay helps her uncover Sep's identity, they could travel together to meet Tamar. Jay shares the controversial abortion-related scandal tied to the Hodel story, which Fauna initially resists, not wanting to harm her family. However, Jay's assurance that he seeks only the truth convinces her to help, under the condition that he arranges for their travel to Hawaii, where she believes Tamar is located. They agree to collaborate, sealing the deal with a handshake. Jay's quest leads him to Sep's studio, where he finds an invitation to another art event backed by Hodel. Meanwhile, Fauna attends a performance by Jimmy Lee in a club met with lukewarm reception. Jimmy Lee remains tight-lipped about Sep and Hodel, reacting violently when Fauna presses for answers, indicating she protect Fauna at all costs. At the Huntington Museum, Jay encounters Corinna amidst Hodel's exhibition and narrowly avoids being expelled by her. He discovers a room displaying surrealist art from Hodel's collection. Initially unimpressed, Jay's perspective shifts when he notices the eerie similarity between the dismembered figures in Hodel's artworks and the real-life victims he's encountered in his investigations, suggesting a motive beyond hate. In 1949, Tamar finds herself in court while a psychiatrist labels her as mentally disturbed with an unhealthy fixation, adding fuel to the fire by suggesting her belief in Hodel's involvement in the Black Dahlia case, which provokes laughter from the audience. Fast forward to 1965, Jay shares with Peter a draft clearing Brody Styles and brings him up to speed on the Huddle investigation, revealing not just Tamar's whereabouts, but also the existence of her daughter. He persuades Peter to finance a trip to Hawaii for an interview with Tamar. However, Peter offers a cryptic caution misattributing a historical anecdote involving Emperor Trajan, which Jay brushes off due to the lack of resources to fact check. Jimmy Lee plans to bring Fauna back home, unaware of Fauna's anxious anticipation of Jay's arrival. When Jay arrives to collect her, Jimmy Lee's anger erupts, leading to the destruction of their Hawaii tickets. Fauna quickly ensures Jay has kept the receipt for the tickets. Amidst the chaos with Jimmy Lee chasing Jay with a knife, Fauna makes a stealthy exit through a bedroom window, setting her sights on Hawaii. The address Fauna discovered in Corinna's book leads them to a local woman who collects mail for those without a permanent address, but she has no knowledge of Tamar. Jay and Fauna find themselves in a bar, where Jay shares memories of his return from the Korean War, lamenting the lack of reintegration training. Their server, though unfamiliar with Tamar, suggests they check a beach known for its squatter community. A confrontation ensues when a drunken sailor forces Fauna to dance, 
which Jay diffuses with a makeshift weapon. Due to budget constraints, they share a motel room, with Jay opting to sleep in the car. However, a nightmare about his war experiences and Sep drives him outside, where Fauna comforts him, leading to a candid discussion about the consequences of taking a life. Feeling somewhat relieved the next day, their search leads them to a beach after following children who recognize Fauna. Tamar Now Found reveals the harsh truths about Fauna's heritage and the circumstances surrounding her birth. Tamar's confession about her father and the reasons behind the misinformation on Fauna's birth certificate spark frustration in Fauna, especially when Tamar mentions the trial and Hoddle's actions towards her, prompting Fauna to flee in shock. At the car, Fauna confronts Jay, demanding the truth about her father. Jay's attempt to soften the blow does little to ease her distress. Fauna expresses her lifelong struggle with identity and self-worth, to which Jay responds with a bleak outlook on the nature of evil and death, which does little to comfort her as she heads back to the motel alone. Jay reaches out to Peter, hoping to protect Fauna from the unfolding story, but Peter insists on her centrality to the narrative, tempting Jay with a career opportunity in exchange for the story. Jay then revisits Itamar, affirming his belief in her testimony from Hodel's trial and expressing his desire to prevent further harm. Tamar warns Jay about Hodel's influence and reveals artworks Hoddle sent her, implying the deep connections and consequences of owning or being owned by someone. Returning to Los Angeles, during the Watts Rebellion, Jay and Fauna find themselves in Chinatown for a meeting with Peter. Before entering, Jay shares his suspicions about Hodel's involvement in the Black Dahalia murder with Fauna, reflecting on the randomness and severity of encountering evil. Peter is already under the influence when Jay presents his proof of Hodel's crimes. Peter insists on involving Fauna, but Jay wants to shield her. Peter, distressed, shares his dark insights into evil from his days as a young journalist witnessing the horrors of Daco hinting at a foreboding reality. Suddenly, Jay finds himself surrounded by police officers, led by Billis in a prearranged trap. From her vantage point in the car, Fauna witnesses Jay being detained but chooses not to intervene, understanding his silent plea. She returns to the vacant home of Big Mama and reaches out to Jimmy Lee, offering an apology for the turmoil caused. Jimmy Lee affirms that regardless of Fauna's biological ties, she will always be her daughter, though she harshly cuts off any exploration into the trial or her past indicating Fauna is unwelcome back home. After the call, Jimmy Lee faces her own peril as Hodel appears in her home. Pretending Fauna is in Hawaii, she tries to fend off Hodel's looming threat with an improvised weapon, but her attempt fails. Her Kodal attacks her, on escapes as her neighbor intervenes. As Ella Fitzgerald's Street of Dreams plays, encapsulating the despair of each Carrick. Peter drowns in remorse, Jay confronts his fate behind bars, Fauna is isolated in tears, and Hodel retreats to Los Angeles, leaving behind a trail of shattered lives. We go back to 1917, depicted in black and white, where a young George Hodel is seen playing the piano for a stern figure. After his performance, George's mother confronts the guest, revealed to be Maestro Rachmanoff for declining to mentor George due to his lack of emotional expression in music, stating George lacks the essence of an artist. Even in these early days, a bull symbol, signifying a haunting presence, surrounds George. In his cell, Jay attempts to halt an attack from one of Billis's men by accusing Hoddle of stalking Fauna with vile intentions. Despite Billis's initial dismissal of Hodel as a suspect, Jay's adamant accusations about Hoddle's sinister plans for Fauna prompt Billis to consider confronting Hodel directly. Fauna, reeling from Jimmy Lee's assault and eager to escape Los Angeles, persuades Shy to take her to Corinna's. Due to racial tensions, she conceals herself in the trunk to avoid drawing attention on their way to Pasadena. At Corinna's, Fauna seeks assistance to reach Reno and shares her encounter with Tamar. Corinna's subtle actions lead Fauna to a chilling realization about her drink, and she collapses with Corinna ominously advising against consuming anything in Hodel's residence. While detained, Jay learns about the ongoing Watts Rebellion from new inmates. Hearing critiques on the police's priorities and reflecting on the systemic injustice faced by the community. This conversation reignites Jay's determination to confront and expose wrongdoing, despite the personal risks involved. Fauna wakes in a strange room, dressed only in a slip, and is shocked to find Hodel in a shadowed corner with her clothes folded near the exit. Hodel invites her to the living room, explaining Corinna's call for assistance after Fauna collapsed, citing the current unreliability of hospitals. He avoids her inquiries about his absence since extending an invite to the city, 
and Fauna shares her encounters with Tamar and Jay. Hodel, with a hint of amusement, suggests she might view him as a devilish figure and trivializes Jay's efforts against him, boasting of a legal victory over a defamation claim. He belittles Tamar's living conditions and questions the truthfulness of her accusations, framing them as delusions. Claiming tiredness, Fauna attempts to leave but finds herself trapped by a locked gate. Hodel guides her back, showing off a new art piece by Rothko, discussing its modern appeal and drawing parallels to Fauna's feelings of alienation. The arrival of Billis interrupts, who, upon hearing Fauna's name, connects her to Jay's situation. Hodel, unfazed by news of Jay's arrest, mentions expected support from the National Guard. As Billis prepares to leave, Fauna pleads with him for an escape, but Hodel's sudden return cuts the conversation short, leading Billis to advise against her leaving with him. In a questioning room, Billis reveals Fauna's location to Jay, hinting at a potential investigation into Hodel who is shielded by both law enforcement and underworld figures due to his illicit services. Observing a minion with a switchblade, Jay proposes a plan where he'd confess to a crime he didn't commit, hoping to escape custody and confront Hodel. Billis, finding the plan suitably sophisticated, agrees to the arrangement. The blade is clean for Jay's fingerprints, who somberly accepts it, lamenting his derailed career in journalism. Fauna, confined again, subtly alters Hodel's chess set by returning the king piece. Dinner is called by Hodel's spouse, Yuna, whom Fauna had previously misjudged as an aide due to Hodel's demeaning treatment. Heeding Corinna's prior warning, Fauna abstains from eating, feigning illness, and avoids drinking the potentially tainted wine Hodel offers. Conceding his failed attempt to drug her, Hodel demands Fauna pose for a portrait, revealing his armed state. In a defiant act, Fauna arms herself with a marble sphere from the house, observing the sinister setup of Hodel's clinic, complete with surgical tools, ominous drains, and a meat hook adjacent to his curtained art studio. Forced into compliance after a violent outburst from Hodel, Fauna dresses in the slip and discovers crime scene photographs, questioning if Jay's accusations against Hodel hold true. Hodel, in response, expresses a disdain for conventional morality, citing the Surrealists and Marquis de Sade to justify his actions as natural instincts sanctioned by nature itself, dismissing any obligation to resist these impulses as contrary to his essence. While the officers driving Jay are preoccupied with making derogatory comments about the Watts Rebellion, Jay seizes the opportunity to escape by causing a vehicle accident, using a key from Billis to unlock his handcuffs and arming himself with a confiscated police firearm. During Hodel's attempt to paint her, Fauna pretends to need to address a nosebleed, using the moment to conceal a marble ball within a cloth. When Hodel resumes his condescending monologue, Fauna retorts with sharp criticism, labeling his work as lacking depth and originality. Much to Hodel's dismay, she provocatively challenges his self-perception and artistic integrity, leading to a physical confrontation. Armed with the concealed marble, Fauna strikes Hodel and ultimately gains control of the situation with the gun. Hodel, undeterred, claims ownership over Fauna, prompting her to question her relationship to him. Rejecting any notion of belonging to Hodel, Fauna denounces him as unoriginal and dismisses his rationalizations for his actions as mundane. She leaves Hodel defeated and in the dark, reasserting her autonomy. Jay, having reached Hodel's residence, is called out by Fauna, preventing a tragic mistake. After ensuring Fauna's safety, Jay descends to Hodel's lair only to find it empty. Overwhelmed with anger and frustration, Jay vents his fury on the abandoned studio, destroying Hodel's perverse sanctuary. Hodel departs, leaving behind an incomplete portrait of Fauna. Amidst the turmoil in the city, Jay expresses his desire to abandon the pursuit of Fauna's story, emphasizing his wish for her safety over all else. Fauna suggests maintaining contact through letters and postcards, though Jay departs into the night, leaving an uncertain future. The moment of understanding unfolds between Fauna and Jimmy Lee at the hospital, signifying a tentative mending of their relationship. Meanwhile, Jay finds solace in Hawaii, engrossed in a letter from Fauna. In the backdrop of Peter's newspaper, a headline announces a renowned doctor's escape abroad, revealing Hodel and Yuna in an undisclosed tropical location. A disheveled Hodel watches as Yuna conceals the Rothko painting. Jay, positioned on a surfboard in the serene Hawaiian waters, contemplates his life alongside visions of Sep and a Korean soldier as Fauna's voice overlays, acknowledging the impact of Jay's actions and omissions on her survival. She reflects on her newfound self-perception, one marked by choices rather than circumstances. The End
Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.